أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. صلى الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So um, I decided to go through an important incident that has many, many lessons, not just an immediate one that comes to mind um, from the seerah. And uh, it's to do with adab primarily, um, but also to do with a lot of other things like, you know, how our behavior should be around not just each other, but our um, just our general brotherhood and the way we should generally treat each other as well. And this is related to the slander of Aisha, Qissatul Ifq. And uh, it's a very important story. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on an expedition to Bani Mustaliq. And that was a tribe outside Medina. And he went there um, uh, and he, and he um, laid siege to them. And long story cut short, it's a bit of a long story, that would probably take a session on its own. But he went there, um, and first there was hostility, but then they all ended up becoming Muslim. And through because he married um, Juwairiya, radi- uh, an, and her, um, and that led to the entire Banu Mustaliq um, become Muslim. And it's one of the most amazing stories in Sira. Um So on the way back from Bani Mustaliq, so they're all now going, coming back. Um, many of the Munafiqun who did not actually participate in any of the other battles, like Badr or Hud, etc., they kept on, you know, finding excuses. Oh, we've got our, you know, we've got our farm, sow our fields, we've got to look after our crops. You know, oh, my, my, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling too well today. You know, oh, I'm, I overslept. You know, whatever. Right. So they kept on finding excuses. Everyone knew who they were, right? Everyone knew who they were. The leader of Abdullah ibn Ubay as Salul, and he was the leader of the hypocrites, and he was used to be one of the leaders of Medina, um, and he was from the Aus tribe. Yeah, so Medina had two main tribes, Aus and Khazraj. So he was from the Aus tribe. So not just him, but many of the Munafiqun were in that delegation going to Banu Mustaliq, and Banu Mustaliq is also called Muraysia, Muraysia, and because that's the area where it is. So, on the way back, after that successful incident, um, the, the entire Muslim army are coming back, and there's several hundred of them, and when they're going back, two young boys, maybe in their mid-teens or late teens, we don't actually know their names, but it's just been narrated, two young boys, that right at the back. Um, of, 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 the, of, the, of the expedition They got into a little fight about something And to the point where They started throwing punches And one of them was from Aus And one of them was from Khazraj And The boy from Aus Said Oh Aus Come you know, come, and, come and defend me And one from Khazraj said Oh Khazraj come and defend me Right So Sorry I'm getting confused. One, one, from, one was from the Ansar, one was from the Muhajirun. Yeah, sorry, my bad. And uh, so what, that one of them was calling the Muhajirun to come and defend him. The other one was calling the Aus to come and defend him. So then, the, then everyone was curious, what's going on, what's going on. Then they come over. And uh, before you know it, they want to defend their own, right? That's just, that's just the way of the time. You know, the tribalism was very strong. That's one of the things that Rasulullah Sallallahu said would never... Disappear from this ummah. Al Fakhru bil Ansab. So, like, division according to lineage or tribes and family or heritage or whatever. And so, it got to the point where the Muhajirun and the Ansar they were having a huge argument, right? And swords were about to be drawn. That's how bad it got, right? Insults were exchanged, swords were about to be drawn, and the Rasulullah was called. Right, and all he said um, was he d- he didn't want to hear what happened. 
it's a very important leadership role we, we, lesson we get in here he wasn't interested what started it he wasn't interested who did what because sometimes you can get drawn into that you know when two kids start fighting you're like right who, who started it <laughs> he wasn't interested he was just like stop uh, Jahiliyyah has already <coughs> overtaken you and he gave and that's basically he kept it very simple but his words were strong and it reminded them and they stopped Abdullah ibn Ubay al Salul he saw this incident and he saw the saw the and he was very tribal, you know, he loved, you know his tribe as well and he hate, and he really despised the Muhajirun. And um, he then came across and he was on when the army kept on going, he said to his uh, he said to his companion he said to one of his companions and he's talking about Rasulullah here. And he said if they keep if they keep oh is it they're just like people who keep feeding the dog that's gonna end up biting them one day. Yeah? And it's clear who they meant who he meant in this case because also someone who diffused the situation, Abdullah ibn Ubay, he loved he liked this. Yeah, he liked the fact that oh there's a bit of animosity here, Mujahaju and you know, we're gonna, you know, teach him a less thing or two. But he was a bit annoyed that this got stopped. So he said these words. A Sahabi, a young Sahabi by the name, by the name of uh, Zayd ibn Arqam, he overheard this. He then rushed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he t- in, and Rasulullah immediately summoned Abdullah ibn Ubay and asked him, "Is this true?" And Abdullah ibn Ubay, being a munafiq, you know, lying is a part of his genetics. So he started saying Qasim after Qasim and it said that he made the most most shadid Qasim. Yeah. So, you know, I swear by, you know, everything that you could think of in terms of a Qasim swearing by Allah and whatnot, he made. Right? And he kept on like saying, No, I didn't say anything like that. So Rasulullah accepted it and let him go. Zaid uh, Zaid was really, really upset. Imagine you just like told someone you just yeah, look this is 